When it comes to witchcraft, the Bible is very clear God stands on witchcraft. In the last few years, there has been a huge resurgence, a huge resurrection or revival of interest in the supernatural and interest in the things of supernatural. Occult, witchcraft and all of these different practices are gaining a huge momentum from Twitter to Twitch to TikTok, even Instagram, where fortune telling, where predicting future, talking to the dead, from makeup artists to Hollywood stars and other people. In fact, even on TikTok, there's a famous trend hashtag that's trending witch talk, which as of today, as I checked, has 20 billion videos connected to it. By the time you see this video, it will be more where people are uploading different practices and different ideas that they have, how they contact and connect with supernatural. God created us with eternity in our heart with the desire to connect with Him. He is a spirit and truth. When Israel was entering into the promised land, I'm going to read to you these two verses where God was extremely clear and precise concerning some of these practices. Now, if you're not a religious person and you're watching this, I want you to just hear my take on it and why the Bible condemns this. If you are a Christian, I want you to not just take that, but I want you to allow the Word of God to speak truth because in it, I'm also going to mention 20 different shades or types of witchcraft that are present and prevalent in our culture. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 and 11. There shall be not found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations that the Lord your God drives them out from before you, you shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. I want you to notice that God made it very clear that these practices are repulsive. These practices are not a sign of weakness. These are not just even moral failures. These are detestable. These put you at making you an enemy with God. You may say, why is this so severe? Versus like, you know, when you lied or cheated or did something that is, you know, morally corruptible. You must understand that there are sins that we commit in our weaknesses. Because we have a flesh, we get tempted by the devil and because we live in a broken world. But there are sins and these sins are sins of blunt betrayal. And it's kind of like cheating on God when you go to the other side for help and support. You must understand that these other gods, these means by which you are reaching the spiritual world are illegitimate. They are still real. When God designated to His sons the nations of this world, as it says in Deuteronomy, these sons, they turned wicked and they started to teach these nations to worship them. They started to instruct them with all of these ways by which the nations can stay in contact with the supernatural, but not with God, their Creator, but with these rebel gods, with these fake, false gods. They're still real in the sense that they are spiritual entities. These methodologies that we hear, these myths that we hear, a lot of them are rooted in spiritual realities that people worshipped in different continents, in different nations. And so imagine like this, you're married. You know, it's one thing when as a spouse you do something that maybe hurts your spouse. You say a negative word, maybe if you're a husband, you're supposed to take the garbage out, you forget to take the garbage out, maybe you forget to clean the dishes, I mean, whatever it is, something minor. As, as bad as it is, it's not going to destroy your marriage. But it's different if you go and you cheat on your spouse. You have a physical relationship with somebody else. You break the covenant, you hurt them deeply and you're telling them they're not enough and you're going for help, love, support, affection from somebody else. That's really how God sees us going into witchcraft, into a cult, into all of these things. God sees that as not only detestable, it's literally cheating on God. It provokes His anger. God made it very clear to the nation of Israel. The nations before them, they worship these foreign gods, these demons. And because of that, they were vomited out of their land. He told Israel, if Israel will do the same, Israel will lose their land. And this applies to every single people and nations. 
This earth belongs to God. We're just stewards. We're just pilgrims. This is not our land. This is not our earth. It belongs to God and God has certain requirements. God has certain laws and God has certain principles that we must abide by. God made it to Israel. He made it very clear. He says, He who causes the kids to go through the fire as an act of worship, human sacrifice, animal sacrifice, he who is using divination, he who translates omens, he who does fortune telling, he who is a soothsayer, he who is a sorcerer, he who casts spells, who uses charms, who consults or conjures up spirits, he who practices the occult, necromancer, somebody who channels the dead or somebody who holds a seance trying to connect with those who are dead. God says these practices are dangerous and they are detestable and they are gonna get you broken in your covenant with God and not only that they're gonna get you demons. This is a direct open door to demonic infiltration and invitation into your life. Now I understand in our culture today some people do it because they're honestly just ignorant. They're completely ignorant. They just want to feel better. Some people just kind of supernatural is really their way of medicating and numbing the pain that they're, they're receiving and they just want to talk to their ex-boyfriend, mom or dad who died. They want to still contact them and they go to a medium. Some people, they really are desperate and out of desperation, they go into all kinds of witchcraft things in their life. But whatever your reason is, you must understand it really does not matter because the devil doesn't care about your reason and God doesn't look at the reason. God clearly stated that this stuff is bad. King Saul was in a very desperate situation so he went to a medium. Now it seems like well I understand you know God didn't speak to him so it kind of makes sense. It's excusable but the Bible made it very clear very short after that he died and it says he died because he went to a witch and so it is dangerous to play games with that and I don't care how popular it is in our TV shows, it doesn't matter how popular it is in our culture. In the culture that disrespects God and it honors any other way of supernatural, it literally connects us to other gods, it connects us to other demons. These are spiritual realities, spiritual entities and I don't care how much you think you're helping people through that or oh but it's I'm the way of light, I'm channeling light, I'm walking with my spirit guide and I'm doing it for good motives and good reasons. The Bible is very clear. You can't sparkle your good motives on something that is internally wrong. It doesn't fit, okay? It doesn't matter how much perfume you spray on a hyena, it's still a hyena. It doesn't matter how much cologne you spray on a python, it's still a python. So your motives do not make something that God clearly stated is demonic. It doesn't make it holy and right. What are some of the 21st century, the modern shades of witchcraft? Let's, let's dive in to a few of them. We understand that witchcraft is the fallen religion of humanity which manifests as work of the flesh and control and intimidation and domination. That's the first sign and it's something that is subtle. It's something that can operate in church circles and families where you exhibit control, manipulation and domination over the person. That is a sign of witchcraft. The second thing is when you're burning sage, when you're trying to remove evil spirits, change the atmosphere in your house and clean the spiritual environment by burning all kinds of sage and candles. Nothing wrong with burning candles but the moment you start buying candles that are supposed to ward off evil spirits and keep the good spirits in, you are crossing to the other side and you are dambling in the occult and it's an open door to the demonic spirits. Number three is astral projection. This is not prophetic, this is not you seeing into the spirit, this is you using the means of Satan to access his realm. He'll show you whatever you need to see to wet your appetite, to tickle your little curiosity and then he's gonna lure you in and then you're gonna need deliverance. Then you're gonna need, you're gonna have a problem in your life and so if you're doing that or have done that you need to repent, cut off any contact with the occult and walk away from it. Number four is daily tarot cards. It's when people instead of relying on their daily manna from God's Word, they rely on tarot cards and just because some of the instructions on tarot cards or some of the words seem positive, they seem to be uplifting and just because you mix the Bible with tarot cards it does not make it holy. You can't bring poison and put it into your tea thinking that the tea will kill the poison. It's not how that works. You gotta get the poison out. You can't bring tarot cards, horoscopes if you are trying to connect 
to God and hear God. God has made it very clear. He gives us His Word. He gives us His Spirit and there's only one way to God and that is through Jesus Christ, not through tarot cards or horoscopes. Number five is angel destiny cards. It's when you begin to have all these cards that are angels. Now at first and all of you who are in new age, you're like, oh but I'm just connecting with angels and everything. Christianity is not a religion of angels. It's the faith that places trust in the finished work of God's Son and we are led by God's Spirit not by angels. We see angels showing up in the Bible but these angel cards are demonic. They open door to demonic spirits. Number six is chanting. Chanting is when you begin to in the different Eastern religions and Native Americans and so many others they have different kind of chants by which you invite and you you wake up or you invite these demonic spirits into your life and this stuff is demonic and it's wrong. We as Christians we meditate but meditation is different than chanting. Number seven is when you're blanking your mind in meditation. Eastern type of meditation is all about emptying your mind. That is demonic. Scriptural meditation is different because it's about filling your mind. That is biblical. The Eastern meditation is about detachment from the reality. Christian meditation is about attachment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Eastern meditation is an open door, a gateway to the demonic. The Christian meditation is an open door to a visitation from the Holy Spirit because meditation leads to visitation of the Lord as you meditate on His Word. Eastern meditation is passive. Christian meditation is aggressive. You're taking your thought thoughts captive. So it's not about blank. The moment you're going into that field, you're beginning to blank your mind, you begin to empty your mind, you're stepping on the landmine that is going to blow right in your face, spiritually speaking. Number eight is burning incense or burning candles. It's when you are bringing candles into your house that have all kinds of prayers and writings on it to ward off evil spirits similar to burning sage. When you're bringing all kinds of candles and you're doing all kinds of prayers then you're setting up all kinds of you know icons of saints or icons of Jesus or images of His mother and you start praying to these things. Burning candles and praying to saints is demonic. Yes, worshiping images in your house. I don't care if it's an image of Jesus. Listen very carefully. In the Old Testament, God was very explicit that there were no images of Him. God did not want them. God never showed His form and He told Israel in one of the Ten Commandments and He was very clear that Israel is not to have images to help them worship. There was no images of God in the temple. There was no images of God in the tabernacle and there was no images of Jesus Christ in the early church until later on church started to introduce images of saints, images of the cross and Jesus and people start to just kind of like have them as they worship and then it starts going deeper where people now pray to these images and then there's these testimonies appear where Mary and then Virgin Mary, Mary Guadalupe and all of these little saints start showing up and making people feel more connected to God. That's a bunch of baloney. That stuff is demonic, clear and straightforward demonic. The reason why is because nowhere in the Bible what makes our faith different than every religion is God does not allow us to have images as our aid for worship or candles as our aid for worship. There's only one thing that helps us with worship. That's the Holy Spirit. And He's not an image. He's not a painting and He's not a candle. He's a spirit and He is God. And there's only one way to God and that's not through Mary. It's through the cross. It's through the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have to be very careful. So all of you, my precious Catholics, I know I just stepped on your toe. Find me one verse in the Bible where God made it clear to have an image of Himself in your house as you worship Him. You won't. There's only images. There's only pictures in the Bible where God was very clear. If you don't destroy these images, you will perish. So throw them away. That stuff is not holy. That stuff does not honor God. Now if you have an image of your father or your mother, or your grandpa, more of like you know or your spouse, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you're using images to aid and help you to get into the presence of God or candles. That is wrong and that's witchcraft. Number nine is calling on angels. Now angels are ministering spirits to those who inherit salvation. We see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says that I will ask the Father, I could ask the Father to send angels. Angels are not our slaves. Michael Angel, Archangels, Gabriel, they're not listening to you. They're not on your payroll. They're God's angels. I understand that new age crap really pushes on this course in miracles and connecting with your angel and your spirit guides and everything. All that stuff, it's demons taking the form of light. The Bible says the devil masquerades as an angel of light. You're not connecting with an angel. You're connecting with the demon who has a mask on. You're being deceived. The only thing you should connect, the only one you should connect with is with the Father through the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Number 10 is spells. It's when we go to somebody 
to cast spells or when we learn different through different books to cast spells on others. It's demonic in nature and is wrong and is detestable before God. Number 11 is Christian yoga. The very idea of yoga comes from Eastern religions. Now there's nothing wrong with stretching or exercising. I personally you know exercise before I exercise you know I stretch my body there's different stretches that they teach you in school very basic ones and then I would run and I would do push-ups and pull-ups and a few other things there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when the moment you begin to connect with your inner self the moment you begin to connect with your chi the moment you begin to line up all your chakras and begin to experience that high and experience that you know people begin to even go into kundalini yoga and all of this stuff and yoga is an open door if you begin to put your mind meditation and focus on collecting and you know harnessing that energy you are opening door to the demonic I don't care how much Christian stickers you put on it yoga with all of its application is not something Christians should be a part of number 12 crystals now they're very popular coffee shops ice cream places gas stations you can get crystals and these crystals they bring you good charm they bring you good luck that stuff is demonic. Number 13 is talking to dead people or necromancy. It's when you're consulting and speaking to people who died. It is dangerous and it is demonic. Dead people are not there anymore. Now you may have a memory of them as you pass through the room, as you recollect or remember things, how you spend time with them, but these dead people, they're gone. The Bible says once people are gone, then there's judgment. They don't come back to visit. Sometimes people experience dead people showing up in their dream and they keep having conversations with them and they tell them, hey, I went to heaven. And now this person is finally comforted that this person is in heaven because they showed up in their dream. That is dangerous. We base whether a person went to heaven or not on what God says, not on the fact that that person showed up in your dream. Some people even go as far as to ask God to let the dead relative show up in their dream to confirm to them where they are spending eternity. You pretty much are stepping on demonic territory. Dead people are gone. They're not coming back. We are going to go to them. They're not coming to us. Whoever is showing up in your dream that's comforting you, speaking to you, inviting you to join them is not that person. It's a demon taking the face of that person. It's called familiar spirit, meaning it's taking the face of someone you're familiar with and it's baiting you into the kingdom of darkness. And when your grandma, mom, wife, child shows up in your dream and they passed away, it's a demonic attack. Do not converse with them, do not have a dialogue, do not develop a relationship. I remember praying for one woman who, whose husband kept showing up. He died, kept showing up in the dream. And then they start having children in the dream. Every relationship she went to did not work. And then this husband start telling her to come and join him so they could be together and have a family in the real um, spirit world. It wasn't a husband, it was a demon. Because when we start praying, that demon manifested and he disclosed all of his secrets that he was the one that was having sex with her and everything in the dream. And so talking to the dead people is really, you're talking to demons. Number 14 is dream catchers. Pretty popular especially in the States. People buy them on Indian reservations, gas stations and also on a lot of other places. Dream catchers, they hang them in the cars, they hang them in their houses, they, parents hang them over their kids' rooms so that it could catch bad dreams. That stuff is demonic. It doesn't catch any bad dreams. It invites demons. It causes accidents, nightmares and attacks. If you have dream catches, throw them away. I'm not against putting things in the house that are decorative. This is not decorative. This is not for decoration. This is for manifestation and this is for demonic infiltration. Throw that stuff out. Number 15 is fortune telling or talking to a medium. It's when you want to know about the future and you go talk to a medium and that stuff is demonic and that is wrong and mediums they can you know have an educated guess about your future and then if you believe in that the demons will begin to arrange your future but the most important thing is they get you on the hook and it doesn't matter how accurate it seems or it looks the the girl that Paul cast out a demon of divination from was very accurate in her description of Paul and Silas but she had a spirit of python spirit of divination people who are in medium people who are mediums and fortune tellers most of them operate under spirit of divination and when you submit yourself to their readings you get the same spirit as well. Number 16 is charms, good luck charms especially. They can be purchased at different stores. Hey get this little charm it will help you to be successful. This charm will help you to get married. This charm will help you to get a breakthrough. That's demonic. It's an open portal to demons. Number 17 is superstitions. Friday 13. If a cat casts a cross is right before you, black cat especially, something bad will happen. The moment you begin to yield to these beliefs, these become doctrines of demons in your life and you become prey 
and then the devil has you on a hook. Throw all of that superstition out and don't believe none of this stuff because the enemy wants to get a foothold in your mind by planting these lies and superstitions that you believe in them and then he can have you on the hook. Number 18 is Ouija boards. It's a board with letters where you communicate with spirits. They're very popular now in, this, in the United States and Western countries. Young people practice that thinking in ignorance. Their minds are so open their brains are falling out. This stuff is directly connected to demonic realm and it will contact you. You will contact the spirit but it's not the spirit you want in your life. Number 19 is ESP and trance. It's when you have senses that are not you know five normal senses that give you knowledge and it may make you feel like hey you know I'm experiencing this trance, I'm experiencing this really amazing trip to the spiritual realm and but in reality you're a slave to a demonic realm and the devil has you where he wants you and he's gonna take you to hell with him. You don't want that. Holy Spirit can take you to a trance. Holy Spirit can reveal to you supernaturally things and He does that. But please understand, the Holy Spirit goes through the Word and His main goal is to bring people to salvation because eternity is real. So if you're practicing that stuff or you're into that or you're curious about that, your eternity is at stake. I know you might getting a high, you might getting some of these experiences that some Christians don't have and you may poke at every Christian and say your religion is boring, you guys don't even have this power that I do. Who cares that you got power but you're headed to hell. You need God. You need to repent and soon and very soon you're going to face judgment. You've been tripped, lied and scammed and I pray to Almighty God your eyes will be opened and you will see the real supernatural power. The power where God died for you, became a man and rose again and He has sent His Holy Spirit to live inside of you. That He will open your blind eyes that you will see the truth and follow Jesus. The 20th way shades of witchcraft is occultic books. Music, books and movies about these things. The moment you begin to read off, now some people read it to kind of learn about it but some people learn to read it to study this so that they can be more successful. The white magic, the black magic, the different movies and different classes that they take. All of that stuff sucks you in into the realm of the demonic because you're in the realm of the witchcraft. I pray that this video was enlightening. I know this was rough. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're practicing any of these things, I invite you to pray with me right now. Let's repent. Let's renounce. Let's have the Holy Spirit break every shackle and shame out of your life. If any of these objects are currently in your house, I want you to pack them and burn them. Pack them and throw them away. You don't need a demon in your life. You need the Holy Spirit and you need to be saved. Pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I repent of my sin. I believe you are the Son of God who died on the cross for me. I renounce every work of Satan and witchcraft. I renounce every demonic object in my life. I choose to throw them away today. Give me the gift of salvation. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and deliver me right now. Be free in Jesus name. Thank you for watching this video. Hey, drop that in the chat. Maybe I missed some, some shades of witchcraft or if you have a testimony of how God delivered you from this, drop that in the comment below as well. Don't forget to hit thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. God bless you. Until next time.